Hello, everyone, and welcome once again to Miami Minutes, the podcast that'll blow your head off. Uh, well, not so much blow it as very definitely slice it off uh, through our cutting uh, edge oh. commentary on uh, Miami. I, I, I pulled that one off. There Hell the yeah. Thing. Um, I am one of the hosts, Niall Mayan. <laughs> I am your other host, John Parker, and through this show, you know, we may be famous, listeners. We may be famous, but we're not going to lose our heads. <laughs> we may be famous. We're not going to tell you either way. <laughs> you might, you might guess we're not very. Yeah, famous. We're, we're, yeah, we're big deals down at the Miami factory. That doesn't work. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be great if we were big in Japan. Like, if we actually went over, we're doing tours and stuff over there. Like, well, especially because it's, you know, I'm a big weeb. It's somewhere I want to go. I say I'm a big weeb. That usually applies to people watching anime. And I, I don't watch a lot of anime. I'm a bad weeb. <laughs> I've never been that into it. Like, some of it's great. And then, like, <laughs> like... All the other anime fans are like, oh, he's a bad weeb. <laughs> he's like a music with leather jacket. And the, uh, <laughs> he, do, he, he doesn't even know what Dragon Ball uh, is. Let me tell you, right? I mean, I've studied some Japanese. You know, I love my video games. You know, Final, I just watched a six-hour documentary about Final Fantasy. Uh, never seen a single episode of Dragon Ball. Mm. Any any variety of Dragon Ball. Well, I think I, I don't know if I mentioned this on this show. I know I've mentioned it somewhere in the past, but I did try to start uh, to go along with uh, Gilmore Ball Z. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the podcast that we're comparing episodes of... Uh, Dragon Ball Z and the Gilmore Girls. Mm. I was like, that sounds like a fun project. I'll, I'll listen along. And then when I watched the first episode of Dragon Ball Z, I, I, I wasn't too sure if that was the same episode they were even talking about. And then I was like, oh, no, no. There's there's, there's more. There's like, before you can start, yeah. you have like another show you need to get through. And then, like, well, how do I get to the start of that? Can I just look up what happened in it? You could try. <laughs> <laughs> but well, you better believe there's lore. And then I was like, Oh, uh, this is Buffy the Gilmore Slayer yeah. show. Just doing the same thing, just with Buffy and the Gilmore Girls. So I was like, yeah, well, yeah, I know where that starts, at least. You know, and My so. understanding of Dragon Ball Z as well, maybe I'm wrong. Listeners, again, I've not seen this, so correct me if I'm wrong. My understanding is there's another version of Dragon Ball Z that cuts mm. out the fluff. Because <laughs> then what, there's loads of What do you judge as fluff, though? Because it's just like, <laughs> it's, the whole thing's a big, it's a big soap but then just guys with huge hair, like, fighting in the middle yeah, of it. Like, well, it my, again, my understanding is, isn't it famous for having, like, 50% of the episodes are, like, recaps and shit? Yeah. <laughs> so I think this, just like, that. Nah, no, nah, get rid of all of that. Don't worry. Get rid of it. And then any, any filler episodes? Nope. Get rid of that. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, uh, <laughs> we are here today to talk about a Minute 79 uh, of Miami Connection. It's a minute that opens... With a silent samurai, mm. and it ends a minute later with a final battle, uh, which I gotta say really sneaked up on me. <laughs> and I thought we had like, oh yeah, there's tons more fighting to go, uh, and it turns out like technically there's two more minutes of fighting to go, yep. and then we we're like, that's it. <laughs> like, like, holy Christ, this really they really got into this very quickly. That's, for uh, <laughs> that's been the biggest thing I've learned through doing this. Like, this movie's shorter and quicker than I um, always thought. I mean, it's weird saying that when we've spent like nearly two years <laughs> covering it. <laughs> That's nothing to short. podcasters. Nothing. Yeah. I was almost getting sl the slight vibes of um, when we were do nearly finishing our first season of Batman. Mm -hmm. I remember that? Because that just seemed like such a massive undertaking at the time. And then when you finally got to like the top of the church tower yeah. and the Joker dangling from the helicopter... It felt like monumental to us because we're like, we're finally, we're near the end of the film. This is crazy. This is the final, <laughs> final fight. And, and now we've done it 50,000 times. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now you rattle through these things. Like, oh, yeah, there's Mr. Freeze falling off the, the <laughs> thingamajig. And, yep, yeah, now we're done. <laughs> it's like, there's another one done. Um, but then I, I kind of got the slight vibe again. I was like, oh, wow, we're nearly finished Miami Connection because yeah. uh, we do come in here, of course, with uh, <laughs> I know we're supposed to believe it's Yoshito. And I know in minutes to come, it's definitely not Yoshido in the suit. I don't think this guy in this suit is Yoshido either. Do I you think not? They just, you got close up of him. I don't. Th I think that's just another guy they got in because he doesn't strike me. He doesn't have the same um, physicality. Well, uh, that's, of a, because, of a Shito. Niall, that's because that's <laughs> because Yoshito 
is entering a different headspace for this battle, right? He's <laughs> he's transforming almost. You know, he's powering up. It's Dragon Ball. That's, I would say it comes across the opposite to me. Because <laughs> the way I think he has different physicality is even when um, the guy comes crawling in to tell him what's happening. Uh, I swear to God, for like the first couple of times I watched this minute as well, I kept thinking it was a chimpanzee coming in. <laughs> <laughs> Except really, I can know now because it's been like... We- We've been talking about this guy crawling back to him for two weeks. But I was also like, why is there... Is this the screen debut of Bubbles, Michael Jackson's pet chip? Oh, my God, yes. And Michael Jackson saw Miami Connection and was just like, get me that chip. Um, I'm sure he probably had Bubbles. But that <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what era. I know Bubbles was like late 80s, early 90s. Is at Bubbles least, alive? So. Oh, no, Bubbles died a long time ago. Oh, so I don't know. Yeah. Oh. No, cause I remember, no, I even remember the time that like the Martin Bashir stuff was coming. I think he he talks about bubbles in the Martin Bashir interview, and that's like early two thousands. I think he's like, yeah, no, I had him for a long time, but now he's dead. <laughs> just like, no, oh. that's very sad. Oh wait, hang on, um, hang on. I've just looked it up. Wait, wait, wait. I think it's more complex than that. Oh, there's been multiple bubbles. <laughs> there's, <laughs> the entire time. there's loads. No, hang on. Life acquisition. Acquisition. That's a horrible thing to have on your Wikipedia entry. Acquisition. <laughs> you never see, like, if you're introducing, like, your kid or something. Like, yes, I acquired uh, I acquired them <laughs> around 1987. Hang on. Media coverage. Legacy. <laughs> I say I, I guffawed at legacy, but yet here we are talking about him. Exactly, All these years right? later, so. Yeah. It seems like his death may have been, it says, grossly exaggerated. Oh. Wait, a, a claim suggested Bubbles had died. Jackson's press agent told reporters that when Bubbles heard about Jackson's demise, he went bananas. Oh, my God. I can't <laughs> believe he said that. But his death is exaggerated. He is alive. But that's what the publicist is saying. But, but There's no the proof either this? way. No one's seen Bubbles. <laughs> oh, my God. Bubbles was the original uh, Kate Milton. Yeah. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, no, here you go. Oh, here you go. Someone has he now lives at the Center for Great Apes. Really? Apparently. Oh, I, thought, apparently. I thought he died in like nineteen ninety seven or something. Apparently. No, oh he, no, definitely. Oh my god. The New York Post, yeah. Last year, a picture of Bubbles at his fortieth birthday party. Wow. Oh but is it the really bubbles? <laughs> Can we see if we can get him on the show for, uh, for Why the not? Next there was a rumor in two thousand and nine he was writing a memoir. Oh, <laughs> that's what it says. Oh, that's when all the real dirt would have come out there. <laughs> oh, that monkey saw everything. Apparently, Bubbles tried to kill himself at one point. So this is getting dark. <laughs> I mean, this is like maybe he saw too much. He did. That's what happened. <laughs> Christ Almighty. Maybe he did kill himself, and they replaced him with a Bubbles who was going along with the plan. I, say, I think like what they they told someone like oh like that that he had like five bubbles he probably did let's be honest and then they're just like oh yeah like, oh, he's going to live in the great ape farm we have uh <laughs> and then now like the, the press go up there is like is that bubbles uh, take a picture anyway and say it is you know? like, <laughs> they asked the, they asked the uh the zookeeper like is that bubbles there yeah sure but then does it go into any details like is he because i could have swore i remember michael jackson talking about having him and then like him not being there anymore so did he like actively give him up, or did he just get moved after Jackson's death? Or um, on on a cursory glance, I think he moved there after Jackson's death. But I I would have to read this whole article. Has it, did no one ever suspected Bubbles of any foul play in, in that investigation? <laughs> well, you'll be happy. Haven't they seen Monkey Shines? Oh, no, you'll be happy to know though. Apparently, Bubbles is alpha at the sanctuary. Ah, oh, of course he is, and he's huge. <laughs> Is it what they say Hughes is and he's like a huge deal or that he is physically huge? <laughs> I hope the I hope the former, but I think it's the latter. Uh, this is like the man murders at the Rue Morgue as well. Is the is it's the monkey, it's the chimpanzee. Mm-hmm. And so like why isn't anyone like when Michael Jackson died, why isn't anyone going like I mean, Bubbles he saw a lot of stuff. You know, maybe exactly. he had motive, you know. <laughs> like, and we all know maybe about he that. was like, this might have been Bubbles vigilante justice for all we know, you know. But, we all know about that chimp that ate that woman's face. Yeah, 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 those chips are horrible. Yeah. Like they're like, I don't, I don't trust them at all. No. Like there's a kind of thing where people are like, if a chimpanzee came near me, I would just be, not in the kind of like, like oh, you know, monkeys are mischievous. It's like I would literally be terrified for my life of a chimpanzee. They seem like they're they're very smart to the point where they're scheming. 
but they're, they're up to so, something. They're actively vicious as well. <laughs> like you see, like the beginning of uh, Nope, the Jordan Peele movie, oh, yeah. all revolves around of chimpanzee killing people, like going crazy <laughs> in a TV studio and like slaughtering people there. <laughs> And like every time you hear about them, like, oh yeah, monkey will like literally rip your face off. Yeah, like, yeah, they don't give a shit. <laughs> yeah, was in uh, with the with that uh, Mike Flanagan, the fall of the House of Usher, and Carla Guigino turning into a chimpanzee Ooh. on the point to kill to kill somebody. But um, the point of all this is, yeah, this is Yoshito. Yeah, <laughs> it's not bubbles uh, shuffling in to. Uh, <laughs> it's his. Uh, I was going to try to think of like what's less than a bubble. I was going to say it's his little brother. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> what's like, what's alternate and lesser than a bubble? <laughs> nothing. A bubble, bubble is nothing. nothing. But no, I I don't know. I th- I don't think this is. It's the way he kind of. He looks a bit like awkward when the guy comes in. The way he shuffles his eyes over to him. He doesn't have the same cool dexterity that uh, the actor previously playing Yoshito has. I well, think they just got like, oh, get someone in for a close-up and that'll do. They don't bring it up either way on the commentary. I, You're on one side, I'm on the other. I think it's him, and I think it's to show, you know, because he's being zen. And in fact, Ooh. that ties into one of my first notes here. You see, he's doing that hand thing. I, I, I also looked up the hand thing. Oh, brilliant, yeah. brilliant. So we're on the same wavelength. Because I always thought that that was just something from, like, Naruto. Like, because they always do that in Naruto. They do all these little ninja hand moves and it makes magic happen, you know? Yeah. It's like when we did um, Batman versus the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yes. When Shredder was going to do that, like, weird dragon punch. He has to put his hands in a whole bunch of different little things before he does it. So it's like, yeah, it's, just, it's kung fu movie, you know. Well, that's what like we Extrapolation thought. and stuff to make the things like, oh, you do, like, really epic, cool things with this and stuff. Turns out it's real. Ah. Uh, which you may have also got that well real in a sense it doesn't give you magic powers like in naruto um but it turns out it's a it's a type of um sort of meditation Mm. and the different way you hold your hand is for different things and there there is science proving it works actually because i looked up uh, i don't know if you had the same one way of the ninja.com uh i'm on dragonskungfu.com oh both both fantastic names now, according to Way of the Ninja, I don't know, this might be different to yours. So each symbol that you do has a specific meaning. So to invoke a specific ability, you have to perform the correct symbol while meditating. Mm. It says, so for example, if a ninja gets injured, he'd perform the Kuji symbol, which is for healing, while meditating. So it's like, you know, you hold, it's kind of like you're telling your brain, I want to heal. Yeah. Yeah, And so in a way, your brain does do it because this website goes into the science behind how it works because it straight up says it's not magic. Don't be stupid. Mm. Uh, but it breaks down like brain waves and all this shit. And it shows you like because you're it, it, it's because you're believing it's belief. You yeah. Know? So you're making it sort of work because you, you're doing the hand science with the meditation, the breath, the visualization. It kind of helps create a sort of the right mental state for what you're going for. Mm. No, but I think it, it all makes total. Because I, I, I did, I dabbled in meditation for a while mm. there, particularly I was going through like bad anxiety spikes and stuff. And you do go through a lot of stuff. It's like, oh no, you can't help yourself through it. Like you know, I just did it for basically just calming down. You know. Yeah. Um, but there's like so much of your your mindset, like just at, by default now, is like you know, just absolutely cluttered with cynicism yeah. and fear. <laughs> And just like the kind of, you know, the, a constant eye roll of things and just been, you know, absolutely riddled with anxieties and stuff like this. And then you don't realize, like, if you can clear all that out, just literally just manage mm-hmm. to get yourself, alter your mood into doing something. Not through any sort of mumbo jumbo, but just literally, like, actually believe in yourself that you can achieve a thing just Definitely, through your mental yeah. state. You actually can do it. Like it's in the, it's it's all a matter of just your belief in yourself, and that's what meditation is helping you do is to get rid of all the all the noise that's in there that's exactly. stopping you from just being able to get into like a mindset where you can actually achieve more than you currently are because all you're doing is like you're kind of ru- running on a, a on fumes in terms of like yeah everything else has been taken up by the fact that I'm distracted by this that and the other and et cetera yep, et cetera yeah exactly um, although. I will say dragonskungfu.com. Uh, uh, they phrase it a little bit differently. 
Because mm. <laughs> they say, from a purely esoteric point of view, uh, kaiju in gestures uh, can grant you superhuman capabilities. <laughs> oh, whoa. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Including predicting danger, mind reading, wound slash illness self-healing. So there you go, the one you mentioned, John. Mm-hmm. Invisibility. <laughs> oh, whoa. Okay. okay. Protection from harm and empowerment. So, uh yeah. <laughs> so they've got they've gone full Naruto. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, then there is like they're, they're showing you exactly which ones because there's yeah the Rin Pio two. I'm sure I'm mispronouncing all these as well. Uh, Sha. I mean you are, but I love it. You're, you're making an effort. <laughs> Kai, Retsu, Zai, Jin, and Zen. Yeah. Uh, and then I believe so. What what did you? You have to really look, but it looks like Yoshito. Quote unquote, uh, he's doing the two small fingertips touching and then the two thumbs touching and the sort of fingers in between, which I believe is to that was the closest I could think. It doesn't look exact though, yeah. Well, you never know, he might be like, I've never done this before in my life. That was <laughs> that's exactly where I was going with it. I, I get the impression, maybe because maybe because the people making this movie they're not. Japanese. Mm. Maybe they're like, I don't know, I've seen a ninja kind of do this. So yeah. <laughs> because that, I mean, maybe that website's different. The pictures I looked at, none of them were quite the same as this. Yeah, yeah. The like white cake just different. like, all oh, those Japanese martial arts, that's just all mystical mumbo jumbo. <laughs> like, <laughs> but this. <laughs> you know, there's nothing, uh, you know, not going to be the good sword in your hand when you're <laughs> trapped in a fight, kid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But you see, that is why I believe as well. It is Yoshito, and but he feels different because he's getting into a different headspace. He's preparing for the final battle. He knows, like, okay, this this is it now. Mm. I win or I die. What? <laughs> Which is kind of weird because, like, it seems so sudden, and it's also like, yeah. is this it? Well, but one thing before we move on to just like everything about the upcoming, well, just everything about the minute because so much of it is like, what? <laughs> um, so to the, uh, the the symbol he's doing, I have down here as um, it means harmony, mm. uh, oneness with the universe or self. This sign represents the element of Earth and is said to provide stability and grounding. So yeah, that's kind of, that's him. Yeah. Uh, getting centered. There you yeah. go. That makes perfect sense. Uh, and then, you know, he'll be so super calm afterwards. There's no way he would do something that only a raving psychotic would do. <laughs> um, hey, he's not perfect. Okay. <laughs> but you also get Rin. Uh, the sign represents the element of water and said to promote calmness and clarity. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, kind of similar then. Yeah. Uh, energy. Uh, the sign represents the element of fire. fire. Wait, which one was that? Pio. Pio. Yeah. Yeah. So close to my middle name as well. I know. I was thinking that then. I was like, what the hell? <laughs> yeah. uh, I said to increase courage and strength. Uh, sha is healing. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's said to enhance speed and agility. Uh, okay. Kai, uh, which is like one of the, well, the major like the comic characters from um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. One, the lady who takes over the, the Foot Clan is called Kai. Yeah. So, yeah, well, that's probably what she's named after. Uh, probably, yeah, yeah. I mean, it is it is quite a popular name. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, intuition. Uh, this sign represents the void and is said to open the mind to new possibilities. I love the Japanese approach to that because if we, in our language, said about the void, mm-hmm. that would be in a really dark, negative way. But they're yeah. like, no, no, the void's great. The void's positive. I think you have those, some of the other days listening to it where they're just like, yeah, you have to just really learn to just get enthusiastic about death and the fact that, like, yeah, that's where you're going, like the void. <laughs> well, I don't gonna... know about enthusiastic, but I also I, I also don't think you should be... Well, enthusiastic, like you're dying to get there. Well, I mean, because yeah. you are dying to get there. Um... But, like, uh, not like, you know, th- think, oh, I'm going to go out and kill myself, like that kind of <laughs> thing. But, like, to just be open to, like, yeah, it's, you know, it's a, it's a thing I welcome coming. But I'm going to one day... Just be in the void and stuff. Yeah, um, it's a very Buddhist kind of approach. I know you're you're reborn in that, but you you've also got a time of nothingness. Yeah, yeah. Uh, th- then Vetsu was dimension uh, controls space and time. Uh, that of course is a. Uh, it actually looks like a little uh, scarf you wrap around your fingers and you yeah. put it in a little blue box and it flies around. That's supposed to be a Doctor <laughs> Who joke. It just didn't take off. I liked it. Yeah. Um, the sign represents the moon and is said to increase power and vitality. Uh, Zai 
which is the creation. Um, the sign represents the stars and is said to enhance intuition and wisdom. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jin, awareness. This, sun, this sign represents the sun and is said to promote growth and development. And then Zen, uh, this sign represents the universe and is said to bring harmony together in everything. A lot um, of them are harmony. Mm. I guess it is, it's all just settling yourself down to the concept of being harmonious with your environment and uh, things like this. It's to stop you freaking out about the fact that you're either going to die or kill someone. Yeah, yeah. Although I think, like, you know, Yoshito is looking forward to killing someone because <laughs> he, he literally can't wait. <laughs> He's just like, oh, you'll do when, when the guy uh, comes but, but unlike the Sith, right, you know, ninjas and things, they understand this. If you go in eager to do that, you're going to slip up. Mm. You've got to be, you've got to be the void. Yeah. You've got to be blank. You've got to be calm. That's how you win. Mm. If you go in with anger and hate, you're not going to win. You're gonna, you're gonna fuck up. What if you go in with mad cackling? Because <laughs> <laughs> it's like this is great though. This little sequence here. Because all right, one, we saw that guy crawling away from Mark. The guy took mm. it in the shoulder. And, <laughs> and my mind is like, is this supposed to be like Yoshito's house? Because I, I, I always thought, like, oh, yeah, the finale, take, like, they go to his house. Because it looks like the same, like, that's where he was doing all his, like, fireball stuff earlier in the movie. Right, I'm glad you brought this up, because I've got a note a bit later in the minute that, screw it, we'll just bring it up now. When he goes to fight Mark in a minute, he gets there in two seconds. Yeah. And I've always thought, this shot here is him at his house. Yeah. So yeah. either it's not, or his house is in the park. It's kind of opening up the possibilities that just like, oh, we just didn't realize Yoshito literally lives down the road yeah. <laughs> from, from Dragon Ball. Maybe this is why he hates them so much. He's like, that damn bad. Practice on those stupid friend songs. I got to hear them all the way down here, for Christ's sake. <laughs> he doesn't get any sleep on like a Monday night or anything. He's like, oh, God damn it again. <laughs> and he's like, oh, Jeff, you you really need to kill that bad, you know. That's the only way the drug trade's going to take off around this town. <laughs> That'd be a great <laughs> twist. That's why... He's trying to get rid of them and kill them. He's like, I just, I can't cope with them anymore. They're ruining the neighborhood. <laughs> he's got like a couple of other gangs set off. That's why he's like, he uh, he ended up getting them the job in the nightclub mm. so that the Dexies would get fired and then Dexies would kill Jack and Sound. He's like, oh, yeah, yeah. That, that guy's a nut job. He'll he'll take care of this. He's like, God oh, damn it, he couldn't even do that. <laughs> and then yeah, now his whole thing is just like, hey, uh, you want to, uh, well, thanks for the pizza you delivered. You want your tip? Well, you got to go take care of that dragon sound uh, man down the road. Oh. There. So they're really holding up the finances in this neighborhood. Nobody can afford to tip the pizza man anymore. <laughs> it's, uh, but, that's, I, but it did seem really either Yoshito has lived literally like moments away from them this entire time. Or this guy has crawled all the way back to Yoshito's house. And it's yeah. taken him hours and hours and hours to get there. It's what it's, it's really blowing my mind going through this because this this is where he was training, isn't it? I'm sure is, it is. I'm sure, what else would this be? This is like the opening, not the opening shots of the film, but like the after we got over the initial, you know, escape from Miami, all that stuff. Like we went, we went to this house. I'm absolutely, and in my mind's eye, before doing this project, I was yeah. like, oh yeah, the finale takes place at Yoshida's house because we see the same, <laughs> the same stairwell and stuff. Um, so yeah, I guess this guy like crawled out of the park, hailed a cab, got into the cab, the crab dropped, <laughs> dropped him off, and he crawl, he's crawling up Michio's driveway now. And then we see Mark in a minute. Mark's coming like he's got like old beard stubble because he's been hunting for a fat <laughs> long. So. Well, this is Uber. Do say you're not allowed in if you're bleeding. So um, you know maybe he had to crawl. That's a bit sexist, isn't it? Come on, come on. Oh, the balls into that. Jesus God Louise. damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think I've I've seen some things in taxis though. Like, Ew. I don't I don't blame them. <laughs> like, it's very Ew. much like you make sure, particularly if you if you're using your own car. Like, oh no, you got to protect that. If it's a black cab and it's not yours, and by all means, like let them do whatever. But uh, no, like I said, no, like, I, I think have... it's because in in America, not to not to have a dig at Americans, but you know, obviously. You have to pay for health-related things. Mm. So apparently people were they, they don't want to ring an ambulance because you have to pay for the ambulance. Oh, no, no. Yeah, yeah, um, so they were getting an Uber. <laughs> and it became like a big thing of like, no, look, you can't get in the Uber if you're bleeding to death. 
Because if you die in the back of that car as well, oh, God. Mm. <laughs> That's unfortunate, though, because, like, I did have to get a taxi to the hospital, like, like two years ago. Because mm. I was just, like, when I rang the ambulance is when I had, like, a, like the worst pain I've ever felt, like, the horrific, horrific pain on my side. Mm. So to this day, I'm not entirely sure what it was. But, like, um, when I was properly, like, I think, like, when I was even Googling, like, what kind of, you know, you go on... There's helplines and stuff for the NHS, and they're kind of like, do you feel this? Do you feel that? And then their final thing was like, when I press submit, they're like, yeah, you need to bring an ambulance right now. <laughs> I was like, holy Whoa. shit. Uh, and then I rang the ambulance, and they're like, yeah, it'll be probably like like six hours before we get there, though. Like, what? This was, a, this was a Friday morning at like 10 a.m. And they were just like, yeah, we're real backlogged here. Like, unless you were literally like, you've already, you've already died. We're not going to get there in time. So um, okay, they were just like, you can either just set a hold on for that length of time or like make your own way there. And after a while, I actually had to ring. It was weird ringing to cancel an ambulance. <laughs> I'd be like, yeah, actually, I don't need that anymore. But yeah, <laughs> then I got the, uh, and I got the whole thing. Yeah, the guy tried, I think he was trying to upsell me. Because I was in the, the back, and he's just like, well, you know, if you go to that hospital, they'll keep you waiting for ages. But if you go to this one that's like, you know, 20 minutes further down the road, you get seen right away. And I'm like, oh, the one that would get you a higher fare. Yeah. No, uh, it's nice, right. nice if you're considering yeah, me there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I had to literally get a taxi to the, to the hospital. Oh, that's um, crazy, crazy. So I, I can understand that. That's, that's almost, that's, I still almost kind of object to the, uh, if you're bleeding, you can't get in rule. Because it's just like, well... Unless maybe there's like you can ring a taxi, because taxis don't, you know, as we saw in Taxi Driver, the film, like Travis Bickle talking about like having to wash the cum out of his back seat oh. and stuff. It's just like, yeah, yeah, I don't care. I think I think part of it as well is just like the insurance kind of a thing. Well, not insurance, you know, and the le- the legality of like, what if they die? Yeah, yeah. Like what what happens then? Are we gonna get blamed? Well, you know? then your your personal car is haunted by them. Yeah, because that's where they died. They're like, oh no! Exactly, exactly. <laughs> this is how this is like the the plot of the reboot of My Mother the Car. <laughs> <It's> oh a... <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then they're like, oh, we have to get that Uber bleeding re- law repealed. <laughs> <laughs> the ghost of injured shoulder man from Miami Connection is haunting the car. <laughs> um. But yeah, so uh, Bubbles the Ninja comes... <laughs> Bubba, uh, that's his name now. He's Bubbles. <laughs> he, I think we're getting a, an answer to our long-standing question uh, about whether Jeff's crew had been, like, ushered in to Yoshido's crowd. Because this guy doesn't sound very ninja-y to me. He sounds more like a Jeff's crew guy. Because the way he calls, like, hey, boss, everybody's dead. Like, it doesn't sound like <laughs> Yoshido's, like... Highly trained, you know. Yeah, they're very stoic they're... Yoshito's men, aren't they? But I guess they were all bikers as well, so maybe I'm. Uh... But they, I think even when they were biking, they wouldn't have said anything. They would have been very like, no, no. We, oh, like... but this is the daytime, so this is when he's normally a biker, not a ninja. Yeah, because they're bikers by day, ninjas by night. So they're, <laughs> they're going against their nature. That's why Mark has to get them right now. He's like, he's in biker mode. If I get to him, if the sun goes down, oh Christ! <laughs> yeah, they transform into like a super version, like. Oh! <laughs> It's like in Thundercats when uh, <laughs> Mumra would do that. Ancient spirits of evil yeah. transform this decade form to Yoshito. He's like the five ninja times the by size. night. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. It's like a werewolf situation. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I think that's why they're just like, oh, Christ, no, we got we to gotta go get him before, before the sun goes out. It's like a vampire coming out or something. Yeah, yeah. Mark's hoping to be able to go in and just stake him in his uh in his you know love seat or whatever <laughs> wherever you know hangs out. Yeah, uh, well, I mean, where would he sleep? Yeah, I wonder what kind of a bed Yoshito has. Oh, we seen this well, we saw a daytime Yoshito. He's he's he, I imagine he full on has like a mirror on the roof, <laughs> a boudoir, leopard skin sheets, like he's, water bed maybe. <laughs> What about he really shook me as a, a lounge lizardy, <laughs> swarthy kind of guy. <laughs> so, he's a bit of a playboy. But again, he's such a ninja by night. He has to get out all his party time in the day. So yeah. you know, he's just like, I gotta, I gotta do it. Like I, I gotta be me sometime. You know. He's like the reverse. Um, he, I suppose actually, no, he's kind of like, in a way, Batman. Because mm, mm. Batman can't do that sort of stuff at night. He's got to be Batman. Yeah. And then, uh, but that's the thing, though, 
because of course the Bruce Wayne playboy persona is a is a mask mm. as Bruce you know putting on that whole like oh yeah crazy playboy hey hey maybe Yoshito yeah. is then no one will suspect he's head ninja no I, I kind of got the vibe of Yoshito <laughs> he's like <laughs> no I genuinely am this like that's why I'm cross I'm cross pollinating I'm, I'm a, he was like he left Japan because they're like you can't be a biker by day ninja by night <laughs> just watch me and I'm going to the land of opportunity <laughs> where I can be <laughs> I want to be a Playboy ninja, god damn it, and I will be. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, and then he's just like he's sitting there trying to keep calm, and just like looking at the sun, like come on, go and set, damn you, set. <laughs> and Mark's just like, oh Christ. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but um, but anywho, <laughs> we'll, we'll get past second two. <laughs> I'm sure at some point. Never. Um, yeah. So bubbles come shuffling up here. Uh, it's like, hey, boss, everybody's dead. Everybody's dead. Everybody's dead, Dave. <laughs> everybody's dead. Everybody's dead, Yoshito. <laughs> <laughs> what? <Well>, even, <laughs> even Vader. Everybody's, everybody's dead. dead. Everybody's dead, Yoshito. What, Kid Rock? <laughs> Everybody. <laughs> everybody's dead, Yoshito. <laughs> Oh, that's a deep cut. <laughs> I'm sure I'm and it's the... staying in. It's staying in. If you don't know it, Google it. Oh, that would be great. Yeah, just took out the, the ninja mask fell off, and Holly was just there. <laughs> Everybody, everybody, Yoshida, they're all dead. <laughs> Only way to improve this movie. Um, but uh, yeah, but I have to say I was a little taken aback by that because we were kind of going like, yeah, I mean, there's a couple. There's, seems to be a couple of guys coming in at them here. The indication of that biker fleet at the beginning. Mm. Was that there was like, you know, at least thirty of them. Well, I think they've killed about that many. But then also you have Jeff's crew coming in on top too, so they were also Legion. Yeah, but that's shit. <laughs> uh, so I, I didn't feel like they. It felt like they took out maybe like twelve guys to me. I didn't think they. I thought like. We still had many weeks of, you know, just stabbing people in a park coming up. But. Nah, you know what? It might come down to reshoots. Mm. Because, I mean, I'll reveal a bit of the commentary track now, but the fight that starts in a minute with Yoshito and Mark and all that, that's all reshot. Yeah. And that's, that's all... When, when um, it gets into it, you can tell. <laughs> so, yeah. like, not this week, but next week and the week after. Absolutely. Real... That's when, that's when, what they went back to do when they changed Jim's fate. They were like, all right, we've got to redo all that then. Because, like, Mark, he's he's got to act differently. Mm. Mm. So, these bits are part of that. i the um, YouTube to see if, because you can get deleted scenes. Like, we talked about mm. them throughout the movie. Well, we, we uh, may do a bonus episode or two. yeah. Uh, I wonder if you can get the original fight, like how much more vicious would Mark have been and stuff? Because he's like, he's... I haven't seen it, but um, but listen, since we started this project, if you remember, the new edition came out, mm. which we haven't watched yet because we were going to check it out once we were done. Yeah, yeah. In, to look for any extras, maybe it's on there. Hmm. We'll see. We'll see. We'll, 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 uh, it'll be a curious compare and contrast scenario. I deliberately didn't want to watch it halfway through because mm. if there were if there were like some different things like bonus materials that aren't on the other versions, it would have coloured what we were talking about. It's kind of like the weird um, when we were going through Batman Forever and they kept talking about like the release of the Schumacher cut was like mm. really gathering steam, and it was weird because we're coming to the end of it after it had been like talking about all these deleted scenes that no one would ever see, and then been like, hey, you might actually see them now, and then. It's been like three or four years, so there's like they're, they're never releasing that. <laughs> like, Aww. give up. Like, <laughs> there are people out there on Twitter every day still banging on. Like, it ain't happening, man. <laughs> like, they they ain't releasing that shit. They should do because it'll be a much better film. But you know, <laughs> uh, and then there's also the people too keep going up. It's like, oh, it's like four hours long. It's like I've read the script. I've I've, I've gone through this. Uh, we we went through it in that show, and it's like yeah. no, 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 there's 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 nowhere near that amount of extra material. But like, there's still stuff though that I would have liked to see. But oh, it would have been good. Yeah, yeah. But uh, but yeah, let's you know, release the. Let's guess why YK Kim had final cut. So he's just like, well, yeah. it's all it's all me, baby. It's my <laughs> choice. But yeah, yeah. Uh... So where were we? Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they're they're all dead. <laughs> they're all dead. They're all dead, Nile. Um, and then Yoshino is just like, well, 
might, go, might as well make it even. <laughs> might as well just <laughs> make sure that they are literally all dead. Uh, and what did you interpret his 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 action as being motivated by? Y- Yoshito. Yeah. By his action, you mean what he's about to do to the guy? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think it's purely one of those... Well, I thought this anyway, and they, they kind of make a joke about it on the commentary. I think it's purely... Like, you failed me. Fuck you. I'll do it. Mm. Like, li- leave it to me. Yeah. Yeah. Because um, it's one of the, it's like an honor thing, isn't it? Like, it's a typical ninja slash samurai slash yakuza situation of, like, ah, oh, you've dishonored the clan. Yeah. By, by yeah. coming back alive. Mm. Basically, you should have died. And that's, uh, I do, I love, I love the way the guy comes in, too, like, using his sword as, like, a kind of, Half walking the stick. Kind yeah, of that thing. doesn't seem good for the sword. But that, if you're dying, I don't think you care. Yeah, <laughs> or maybe that's what you, that's the thing that pushed Yoshida over the edge. Is the like, disrespect to the blade, <laughs> and also the disappointment. I like I thought there was a chimpanzee coming in. I got all excited, and this was one of the reasons. It's you. Ah, oh. <laughs> so you escaped from Michael Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> Finally. Um. <laughs> uh. The the the. the that, that that of course is very logical um, mm-hmm. way of looking at things. So like, yeah, yeah, you know, you've you've dis- you've dishonored me. You dishonored the clan. You deserve to die. It's the cackle afterwards. <laughs> it's like the demented, like whoa, oh, 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 oh. like it's it's full on Dracula. He's laugh. like, well, now it's on, baby. <laughs> you've unleashed the, the, the Y man. It's just such a like. It really is going into like. Oh yeah! In case you forgot, like he's a psycho, <laughs> Yoshito. Because yeah. like his entire cl- his entire ninja crew has been killed by two guys. Mm-hmm. And then he just has a kind of like. Oh, this is great! I'm, I'm, have a, I'm gonna have a great time going out to fight this guy. <laughs> like it really is like. Oh man! Do, do, at least you think he'd be angry. Or no, I think he. I think he kind of in a weird way, is excited that it's like, oh, someone can actually step up to me. Mm. Like, he took out all of my guys. Yoshito could take out all of his own guys. You know, he's like, ah, someone's on my fucking level. Let's (laughs) rumble. Or maybe he's just like, oh, I took out insurance policies and all those guys (laughs) as well. (laughs) I'm rich. And then they look into, like, the insurance people come and they're just like, oh, wait, did you draw first blood, though? Like, uh, well, what do you count? Like, well, this guy Jim says that you attacked him. <laughs> like, oh, oh no, it, it's no! It's famous in insurance policies. The first blood clause. Yeah, <laughs> but then they'd be like, no, no, because they, um, they, they killed Jeff. They killed Jeff. That's right. <laughs> and then, like, yeah, but it says here that Jeff attacked uh, attacked this guy John, and it comes so he, but he, didn't, he wasn't bleeding after that though, was he? He just <laughs> he just threw his books to the ground or whatever. He didn't actually kill him. Jeff's actually dead now. They drew for his blood. They they fucking did. You're not getting a penny. <laughs> that's um, why he's laughing the absurdity he knows he's not going to get money he's laughing in the like the, at the ridiculousness of the situation the, the, the way it's angled and the nature like the kind of terrifying nature of the laugh it did remind me to the point I thought like is it an homage to that weird laugh that Charlton Heston does <laughs> In the first Planet of the Apes movie, where, like, remember when they, the ship crashes, and they get out, and they're just like, oh, it's like a, it's a planet of nothing. Yeah. Um, and then they put, like, of course it ties in now with apes and all the, all the bubbles talk, but. Um, <laughs> it's, everything's connected. Everything is connected. We do this every week, though. We randomly seem to go into the same topic about, like, oh, yeah, Buffy, and then all of a sudden we end up talking about, like, hey, this guy was married to Sel Michelle Gellar later or something. This so, is how. The mind works. It's a labyrinth. Yeah. But, of course, you do remember the very unsettling scene. Of course. Um, yeah, the guy, like, plants, like, a little American, little tiny American flag. And then Charlton Hessen sees it and kind of does this, like, ha! 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 Like, this terrifying laugh. And then the, I love the, that the, laugh because it's what it's symbolizing to me. Maybe I'm wrong, but I always thought it was, like, he's laughing that this guy's bothering to plant this flag. He's like, nations don't mean a fucking thing. 
Yeah, yeah. That's just in the scenario too to think like, oh, we claim this land in the U.S. It's like we don't even know where the hell we are. Like, yeah. <laughs> we don't even know where the fuck the U.S. is from here. Like, God yeah. damn it, you stupid idiot! It doesn't yeah. matter. It's irrelevant. But there's a Statue of Liberty right around the corner. <laughs> there's a, but, wow, wow. Um, oh, oh my God! You know he was wrong. It was yeah. Earth all along. Yeah, yeah. Uh, although, and also too, I, I also love that laugh because it is it is so unsettling. It's <laughs> getting, it's foreshadowing. It's just like this ain't good that you're on this place. The planet's full of apes. Get out of there where you can. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I was almost thinking. I was like, it's very similar energy to the <laughs> like him and Heston. It could uh, be. It could be that. Well, maybe maybe they got laughing. Charlton Heston to fill in for it, the <laughs> Yoshino actor. That's why. That's I just... who it is. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe he's laughing at the. Um... Right, well, yeah. how do I say this nicely? The prop cuts the guy's head off. The yeah. prop that's left would look absolutely fine if they didn't keep jiggling it around like that. <laughs> so maybe he's laughing at the ridiculousness of the prop. Like, <laughs> you fucking clowns. It's, uh, it was very much like an energy, like a, a, a beheading in the same energy as like Austin Powers sticking that guy's head into the piranha tank. Where absolutely. It's like, this ridiculous thing comes out on the other side. It's like, well, that's obviously fake. <laughs> like, come, come, come on. <laughs> it's the jiggling. For, I mean, again, I've never beheaded someone, so maybe that happens. But the actual prop, I think, looks okay. Mm -hmm. Not the best, but it looks fine. It's better than I could make, you know. If he cut his head off and that just then collapsed to the ground, you'd be like, okay, fine. Yeah. It's the jiggle. <laughs> not, not, not like a sexy jiggle. You gotta, you gotta get in the death rows, though. People are always like, well, if you, if you just showed a static body, people are like, where's the death rose? <laughs> uh, I, he's cut his head off. <laughs> just he let also the body his... fall. Let the bodies uh, hit the floor. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, and I also, too, the, I love that they put in that sound effect that they loved so much that they used the same sound effect not three seconds later. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, was, he, was Mark cutting off the head of that tree? Like, what the hell's going on? <laughs> but... Um, yeah, the the the, the, the beheading. I, 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 what I'm actually thinking though is that Yoshido's meditation, and you were saying there that the little symbol he was doing was talking about what the you know oneness and making mm -hmm. things one and stuff like that. My head canon now is that, and this is why Yoshido's cackling with such glee as well, is that. He's one of those. He, he's got that power where he can like absorb people's energy. Mm. That like he like he absorbs their abilities and stuff. So what's actually happens? Like he sent out all his. He sent out his chaff, you know, and he was just like, oh yeah, so send out the crap to to, to, <laughs> to get taken care of, and then all their souls, like Freddy Krueger, you know, and Freddy Krueger kills the kids and you yeah tears open his jumper and he's got all their faces on his chest and stuff. Uh, maybe he did it at the gym as well. Yoshido's got Jim's face right beside his nipple, going like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, then now the and then it also explain that spoiler for next week. But like, if he absorbed Jeff as well, he absorbed Jeff's powers and abilities when Jeff died. That would explain some stuff that's going to come down the line. Absolutely. Uh, and then yeah, by like killing this guy, he's also like, now I have the full power of the nin a, a fully trained ninja clan. Is all all their power is in one man now, oh. and also once I kill this guy, who's clearly the best, you know this Mark fella who we'll get into it, but have to emphasize never met, <laughs> no. doesn't even know his name. <laughs> Surprised he even knows like the, would know to see him. <laughs> like keep I, know, I keep hearing about this dragon sound, but whatever. Well, that's the that's the thing. I mean, I wrote this. I wrote down that question. We've asked it about 50 times, but they don't know each other, do they? No, they that, that's the, they, the, there should be, like, like what, like what we had when they were going to confront Jeff, even though that was a bit underwhelming as well. But there was, like, a groundwork laid, at least between John and Jeff. Mm. And Mark had his all, you don't scare me at all, like all that business. Yeah, classic line. And, uh, at all. Yes, um, you got to say it twice. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> oh, that was great. <laughs> At all. But these guys, like, they live. Mark seeing Yoshido will be like, is this guy, is he just one of the other ninjas or is he like the main guy? I don't know. And then after he kills him, he goes to be like, is there any more? Like, I'm, <laughs> spends, spends the next day walking around the park, brandishing a sword, like, 
come on. <laughs> like, where, where, where's the rest? Like, oh, no, you killed the main guy already. It's okay. I think he knows. I think as soon as they come face to face, it's like, ah, mm. this is different. Because like he did earlier when he was, uh, you know, about to have his fight with Jeff, he completely changes his demeanor. He's He goes from, like, Mark goes from crazed mm. to like, oh, oh, okay, I need to, I need to fight. <laughs> it's almost as if they film this several weeks later with a completely <laughs> different mindset. <laughs> Stop ruining the movie. <laughs> that would explain, though, why freaking uh, John doesn't feature, but Mark does. It's like, oh, John's suit was ruined. Like, we, <laughs> <laughs> There's no reshooting that. <laughs> so Mark's like, thank God I didn't fucking do anything to the, the, the vest and shirt. Because here oh, we go. Was, he keeps them pristine, baby. Why do you think they use the same sound effect twice? That's that's an interesting one. I don't know. I don't know. There's uh, just to mirror the two. Like, they're, are they meant to be the yin and yang kind of mm. situation? They should have had Mark in a black outfit, Yoshito in a white outfit. But it almost it kind of has the vibe like it comes across more like it's an editing mistake. <laughs> like they accidentally <laughs> put the sound effect back in and then just couldn't trim it out without really damaging the rest of the movie. So they're like. All right, that sound effect's there twice now. <laughs> I don't know. It seems so deliberate. It's weird. It's very weird, especially because the, what I was going to bring up is, like, the shot is strange in itself because we cut to Mark. <laughs> we cut to Mark yeah. cutting his way through the foliage, or is he killing someone? Foliage. What's he doing? <laughs> For his... <laughs> He's also got a job as a part-time gardener. And he's just like, oh, well, I'm here. That's right. I forgot I was supposed to mow old man Yoshido's lawn. <laughs> and he's like, you never do a good job, Mark. I'm finally got, I'm finally got an excuse to kill you. It's it's so weird. Because it, it's shot almost like he's slaying someone. But mm. there's no one there. I guess it's maybe just to sort of like remind you that violence is happening <laughs> or something like yeah, it's all intense. Even Mark chopping through the trees is the yeah. same sound as a guy get his head cut off, you know? It's... Maybe. Because I, I can't connect what we're seeing to what we're hearing. Hmm. It's so it's peculiar. Um, and I, I just I don't know what they were thinking. Yeah. And they don't bring it up on the commentary. But I do wonder, though, in the original ending, if there was a exchange. Because it is like, I mean... You know, the film has not got a good reputation as being, like, a, a genuinely good film. We've found so much gold in it. But, like, this is a, a major failing in that, like, yeah, the, the major, the final battle is between two guys who have never met <laughs> and have no... And this ain't, like, you know, that can work, because, as you call, spoilers for, like, season six of Cobra Kai. Yeah. But when Terry Silver and, um, we call the guy from Karate Kid 2. The, um... Oh, shit, what's his name? The Japanese guy? Yeah, yeah. Chosen. Chosen. Yeah. So, like, the, the the second to last or last episode of season six of Cobra Kai, or season five, maybe, uh, whatever, whatever the, the, well, you know, the, the years down the line, people, this won't make any difference anyway. No, exactly. It's all one thing. Uh, but, like, yeah, there's a fight between those two guys, and it's the most exciting thing ever. <laughs> because, yeah. And those two... Those two guys don't really have any beef with each other, but for something that shows that well made, that you're like, holy Christ, I am into this. Uh, well, and then famously, I mean, they they don't actually end up having a conflict, but you know, Wrath of Khan. Yeah, I mean, they that's have true. a conflict, but not face. But to they face. they talk a lot though. Like that's they, true. Kirk and Khan, it's all it's all it's just a big inter- intergalactic game of chess, basically, of like two just guys different talking. approaches to a similar thing. Like that's that's all in on the communication. Yeah. Not on the fighting, whereas Cobra Kai is the other way. And it's also just like the kind of uh, the build up of, like, say, for example, another film that came out around this time uh, that also had a reshot final fight because oh. uh, they just ran out of money. Um, uh, Masters of the Universe. Oh, of yeah. yeah. <laughs> the film I've mentioned once or twice. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like, I've it, never heard you talk about that. But like, the, like I, I gotta defend that film up and down. But just before that big final, the the big final battle is like an incredible scene. And I mean that with full sincerity, where it's a bit like, you know, Skeletor's become a god or whatever. And he's got He-Man's sword and a little 
keepsake box by his throne. <laughs> and then at the end, like, He-Man swings across, Skeletor's like, no, and tries to, like, electrocute him. And He-Man just grabs the sword out and does, for the first time in the whole <sighs> movie, like the, I have oh, the power. power. You gotta build then up I, to it. Then I, I'm talking about the, like, the, the, the He-Man saying I have the power in the last episode, too, but uh, what, do you, what do you know? Uh, but this one, then they have a little exchange, Dolph Lundgren and Frank Langella. And I genuinely think it's, like, one of the best scenes ever. Where, like, Skeletor is all like, you will no longer stand between me and my destiny. Ah. And He-Man is this whole, like, you know, but I will. I told you it was always between us. I was like, I hate to smash you out of existence. To drive your cursed face from my... And it's all this, like, (laughs) let this be our final battle. And, like, these guys, like, this, you know, the cartoon obviously came before. But these two actors, you've only kind of got them, like, talking around each other the whole movie. But the, the inferred relationship there makes that so exciting that even when the fight happens and it's crap, you're just like, well, that was a great build up to that. Hell yeah. These two guys are just like, you the guy. <laughs> like, you, are you the guy? <laughs> like, yeah. All right, I guess we're fine. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get, it, it is strange. It is, str- especially, especially when they've reshot stuff. Yeah. Couldn't you, you just throw in a scene or two? I'm yeah, guessing it's beca- it must have been down to, like, we'll really get into it next week when it becomes so, so obvious. But, like, the, the actor playing Yoshido didn't come back for those reshoots. And I guess, like, it could genuinely be that there was dialogue and stuff. They actually had, like, a much better, like, much more satisfying fight. That they're like, we can't edit the audio into, like, the work this anymore. But then what would they have had him saying that would have been, you know... Just constantly talk about Jim being dead? Like, what, what, what is it? <laughs> I'm torn now. You might... What you've just said has made me... Made me think you might be right about it not being the actor. It's like, oh, but we'll, we'll, we'll get into all that next week. We'll, oh, oh, okay, we'll okay. Good. I'm excited. Because I, I think you're right. Um, And it sounds like you know you're right. So I'm going to... Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> but, um... It would be just weird, though. <laughs> just, just like, again, this is still the birthday party of the little kids happening just off camera <laughs> there. And Ishido is just like, I'm guessing bloody guy with a sword cutting his <laughs> way through my garden <laughs> is you're the you're part of Dragon Sound, right? You got that stupid red orange T-shirt on. They always dress <laughs> like that. <laughs> well, all you need to do is go into your garden and find the guy running around like crazy who's not dressed like a ninja. <laughs> it's got to be that one, right? Although it didn't... I'll try to remember back now, because we know that Jeff saw Dragon Sound live, for sure. Mm-hmm. Did you, Yoshido and Jeff went out on the town one night. Did they, weren't they going to see Dragon Sound? They did see them. I don't think they were going to see them. Oh, they, 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 yeah, they, they weren't were like... They weren't there in their own Dragon Sound t-shirts going like, oh... That's a good what? point, actually, because we've been saying all episode here that they... Well, not all episode, but for the last little bit, that they haven't seen each other. Mm. But I suppose Yoshito has seen Mark. <laughs> he might be like, oh my god, it's the guy yeah. from Dragon's House. <laughs> but Mark hasn't seen him. <laughs> he might be like, before, before we get into it, can you please do the Taekwondo move on? Yeah. Because I was such a big fan of that. And, like, and then you signed your... Uh, I mean, I guess I don't need an autograph because your soul's going to be dwelling inside my body once I kill you. But yeah. uh, <laughs> he, well, he's Shang Tsung, yes. Yeah, well, that's, that's how it is. He is, he is Shang Tsung. <laughs> no, that's, I genuinely believe that's his plan. Like, I'm headcanning that. That's going in the novelization and everything. That he's Shang Tsung. <laughs> that he's Shang Tsung, and he is, and, and he's Freddy Krueger, and he's got like, yeah, he absorbs people into his body. Yeah, your and that's, soul is mine. And now he has the strength of 30 ninjas... And Jeff, somehow, even though he didn't kill Jeff. I guess he didn't kill any of the ninjas either. But it's like maybe he just can, like, as their souls are ascending, he can just, like, use his powers to drag them into his body no matter yes, who they are. Yes, that'd be amazing. Right, we need someone out there to make us a remix of the Mortal Kombat theme. But instead of being, like, you know, Sub-Zero, Liu <laughs> Kang, it can be like, Jeff, <laughs> Yoshito, <Mark>. Vader. <laughs> Kid Rock. <laughs> yeah. People are like, why did they mention they have all these random arbitrary names and they bring up Darth Vader and Kid Rock at one point? <laughs> Dexy. <laughs> I'm, I'm tempted to ask our um, our themes creator, Ash, to uh, help us with this. Oh, 100%. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. <laughs> uh, it would be great though if yeah, he had also 
So I'm assuming at this point we ain't seeing Dexies again. No, uh, no. So he's uh, it could be that he died. He was <laughs> he was one of the ninjas out there that got taken out. Uh, or like maybe he's just like no, no. He's not he's not a ninja at heart. He doesn't he's have those back skills. He's coming the sequel. You know, he's he's off there somewhere. But if he had done, just like Mark getting one good blow in, and Nishido <laughs> been like, "Son of a bitch!" <laughs> it's like, it's like all well, that's he, what all the sequels. He... That's what the sequels called, isn't it? Miami Connection Two, Dexy's Revenge, <laughs> Dexy's Midnight Run. No, oh! <laughs> no. But then he's the Miami Midnight Ninja. Yeah, uh, uh, no, works. We'll, we'll workshop it. We'll workshop it. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah, we do get the um, the like. It's exciting for us because we've, we've spent seventy nine weeks getting here, but um, it's still a little bit underwhelming. Uh, final confrontation between uh, Mark and his arch nemesis of all of two days uh, <laughs> that he doesn't really know anything about. Yeah, again, they have had a scene. And again, I'll put it all, we'll put this all in the novelization. Like, Yoshido at Dragon Sound, heckling him or something. Or just doing some some interaction between them. Just to yeah. have like a, you know, like a little, even in like the, the mid-90s, like crappy TV version of, um, of The Stand. The Stephen King book, The Stand. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's the only version I know because it was a big deal when it came out. It was a big deal when it came out. Yeah, yeah. I love that. It was one of my favorite books, The Stand. So uh, so you don't, so you don't like the TV version? <laughs> no, no, no. And then like, the, 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 weirdly enough, the uh, the recent one that everyone really hated, that were like, I can understand why people hate it, and I do hate quite a bit of it, but like there's, <laughs> there's stretches in it where it's pretty good. Uh, but it's all the episodes directed by uh, Vincenzo Natale, you know, who did <laughs> Cube. And splice and stuff. And he did episode. He did a lot of like the arts, artsier episodes of Hannibal. I, get this. I've only seen Cube Two. I know this because we've talked about the on Batman it oh, about yeah. the fact that like you <laughs> you seen Cube Two. I've seen Cube One. Maybe we should do a Cube podcast ah. where we're both like. <laughs> Hell yeah. Why not? And then neither of us had seen Cube 3, I believe. So we're like, maybe we should just get together, use our combined knowledge to write a Cube 3. There is one. I know. There, uh, that's what I'm saying. We Neither of us had seen it. So we can just like write our own version based Why on like... Why not? It can't be any... I don't know anyone who did see Cube 3. No. Nah, nah, the thing is, I have no even real intention of ever watching Cube 2. <laughs> Hypercube. Hypercube was good. Uh, but yeah. I had no knowledge of what the cube... But I don't think you need to fucking know. It doesn't matter. I think it's, it's pretty self-explanatory after like the five minutes of just like, oh, yeah. they're going from room to room and hey. Yeah, but, uh, but Hypercube, I think it was... the different rooms are in different places in time. Yeah, I know. Like, and I remember just even looking at it and been like, oh, it's a completely different aesthetic and everything. It's like, eh, I, don't, I, I like, I like the, the grimy, dark you know cube from the oh it's completely one. bright and like clean and things yeah yeah it was real like it's, it's like it's, it's, it's anti-cube almost but well hey well, you know what if you're gonna do a sequel flip things on its head you might mm-hmm. as well if you just do the same thing again what's the fucking point <laughs> how do we get on the cube again because <laughs> like, it's great i don't know i don't know uh we're talking about uh yoshida uh, oh i had a thought there that <laughs> was so oh, it's gone it's gone <laughs> um but yeah, so uh, Yoshido's absorbed Dexy and uh, <laughs> we're writing a Mortal Kombat. Oh no, but yeah, that, oh no, that was it. The 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 stand. There's a bit in the TV version in the '90s mm. where the character Larry Underwood bumps into like a a guy in the street called the Rat Man, okay. who called like, Kit. <laughs> but he just kind of goes like oh hey sorry buddy and the guy goes like really intensely like the rat man will forgive you this time like setting Ooh. it up like they're enemies and then the end of the world happens and Larry Underwood travels all the way across America and then at the end has to go all the way to Las Vegas and it turns out the rat man is like a henchman to Randall Flagg the big villain <laughs> and they, ha- they have like a little yeah these these two guys don't like each other from that one little time he bumped into him in New York and he went like, the rat man. Blah, blah, blah. Hey, that's how that's how people hold grudges. I do. But it's just the fact that they're just like, yeah, even though that's a completely arbitrary, meaningless little thing. It's like, well, you have to set up a, like Larry and this guy is going to be spend some time together later. So you have to establish that they have a prior 
relationship, even though it's a bit ridiculous <laughs> that mm. like they would do if they even remember each other after like all the stuff that happened. But uh, <laughs> I do also know too in the the TV remake, the Rat Man was played by Fiona Dourif. So, oh, whoa, uh, okay. Woke stand, gender flipping <laughs> the Rat Man. Woke has ruined the sun. <laughs> I think that was one that yeah, literally no one complained about. I don't one because I don't think anybody noticed, <laughs> and two it's like oh funny Fiona Dourif can do whatever she wants. Like but, <laughs> they're casting Fiona Dourif as uh, Rose Tico, well, there wouldn't have been any problem, I don't think. But oh, cast you know cast her in a Miami Connection remake. Come on, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, who could you play? She could play all the parts. I think she thinks she'd be a great Jeff. To be fair. Uh, or more Dexies. I think she would be a great. Uh, we should we we should actually start planning this as the next project, writing um, an all female reboot. Oh, of uh, Miami Connection. Sandra Bullock's in there. We oh. can we can make this work. I really want Natasha Leone in there somewhere. Uh, Natasha Leone. She would be the nightclub owner, maybe, or maybe hey. she would be Dexies. Because we're going to have to get some actual martial artists in, though, like, or combat people, wrestlers, you know. I think, like, Mark would have to be Michelle Yeoh. Like, that's kind of... Oh, yeah. Oh, well, like having said that, you know, no offense to her, maybe a bit old. <laughs> I mean, like, oh, she won't make a convincing call as you. And it's like, oh, I've never stopped her before. <laughs> At least Mark vaguely seems like someone who might go back to college. <laughs> Whereas, you know, again, she could, she could, but I, I don't know. No, nah, I think I'd just lean into it. Have her dress exactly the same <laughs> and everything too. It's just like, oh, She would look she's... great in that outfit. Um, and yeah, they could do that. would be like Taylor Swift as Tom or something like that. Oh, no, Lady Gaga as, uh, as Tom, I was like. Oh, yes. And she, oh, she would, she would so, she, you know, she would probably full on get into the mullet and then actually grow a mustache somehow. Like that would be her whole, mm. that'd be her look for that uh, that era of time and stuff. Uh, yeah, like actually, I'm gonna, I might do that as a little mini mini project for a mini assignment between now and next week to come back with a full cast of uh, the the all female Re- Miami Connection reboot. You better remember now because the listeners will be angry. And yeah, I'm the no, one who it's... deals with the emails. <laughs> <laughs> I'm making a mental note of it now. It's uh, I'm putting it in the vault. You can't get anything out of the vault once it's in there. It's a vault. <laughs> That's it. It's locked away. Yeah. yeah. Um, but we're almost like we're almost pretty much at the at the end of the minute here. Like we do get into a little bit of clinkety yeah. clankety of the sword, you know. But there's a bit uh, of action. I mean, as I said, you know, Mark. I get the vibe. He, he can sense, oh, this is the powerful guy. Okay. He means business. Complete change in demeanor. But that's when, like, they have a tense standoff, don't they? It's very, like, neither of them wants to move at first. Eventually, Yoshito does go in for the kill. Mm. But Mark deflects and ducks, spins around to confront his foe. <laughs> I think even, minute. I remember even, like, when they did the, the Street Fighter movie. Mm. You know, the, the... Street Fighter Minute. <laughs> with Van Damme and Street Fighter Minute I think would genuinely be good because there's, su- there's such a bat bat plop I try to ed- <laughs> swear around your editing <laughs> the, 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 no this is the show where you can swear oh okay so, so those bad shit like crazy stuff happened with Steven Souza the writer of Die Hard wrote that script like, people people forget that but like, I, I forget that and I no, love no, it the, no the, act, the, 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 the history behind Street Fighter the movie is bonkers yeah um, so Street Fighter Minute I think with, maybe we should do that next. That might be fun just to be like, hey, this is like... Because then you get into all the game stuff and all as well. It's like there would be, be plenty to go through. And we get to talk old, about Raul Julia. Raul Julia. Because I was going to get that. Because even as like, you know, weak sauce as that movie is in a lot of ways. And, you know, that's debatable. Uh, like at the end, when you get Guile versus M. Bison, when they come down, they're like, right, it's <laughs> yeah. only... They literally send all their henchmen out of the room so they can fight each other without any interference. It's got to be one-on-one, baby. And then I can't remember... Um, I think it was... And, and Raul Julia does get to do the anyone who opposes me will be destroyed. Like the yeah. the classic M. Bison line. And uh, I can't remember what Van Damme says, but I, I know then Julia has a great line of like... Oh, you have made me a happy man. And Van Damme's like, next, I'll make you a dead one. Yeah. And they, they get it. What? That anything. That, that, that's cheesy bullshit. I love it. <laughs> Why isn't there anything like that in here? Come on. What yeah. line? Because this something. is serious business, man. I guess, yeah, Mark doesn't seem like the... He's not the quipping type. Really. No, he's too respectful. 
he would be like he thinks the gym is dead it's like no I'm, I would I wouldn't make a joke in a, a moment like this it's not like, a laughing matter yeah yeah mm. it's uh so it's a shame it's a shame he's not got more of a of a you know of an Arnie in him really to, to throw in the old quip there but that's what Jim should be used for throughout the movie delivering little quips because mm. he's not like the best fighter as we've seen so he should always pop up and make like a little gag you know at the yeah. side it's just like, like where John is throughout all this. He can he pop in and because we know John was a bit of a jokester at the start with all he, this. At the start, but now he's a fucking crazy psychopath. Oh yeah, that's, that's, that's true. Yeah, <laughs> it's gonna be like <laughs> the actual ending of the movie should be like a recovered Jim going to see John in the insane asylum. Probably <laughs> think he never recovered. It's like, well, that's the only thing. Like, obviously, we're on their side. I do think they're justified, you know, in what they're doing. But would the police see it that way? The police would probably arrest everyone. Mm. Surely they'd go to jail. Also, I still have so much respect for everyone in all the characters Miami Connection in that no matter what happens, they're like, oh, don't get the police involved. No, 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 no. Like, no. We'll, we'll sort out our ninja biker war <laughs> ourselves. And so, think was, someone else would have called the police? Or, but I guess that's the logic of sort of making this look like it's set in like a swamp. I think there is just a thing too with people. I don't know now because it's, you know, in, in uh, our time of recording, and for like many years, but like, you know, much more now, uh, there's a just a great anti cop rhetoric around. Like, people just do not like, you know, ACAB, all that, all that business. Mm. And I was watching a movie from the 70s the other day, uh, The Silent Partner with Elliot Gould. Uh, great film, I have to say. Oh, I really, seen that. Uh, and, um, but just so many things happen to him. At times you're going like, why doesn't he just call the cops? Like, you can't just, do that. <laughs> but I think his, his, I really respected his attitude because everything that happens to him, he just kind of gets on with it. And it's like it never once occurs to him to phone the police. <laughs> it's just like, oh no, I'll take care of this. Like, well, this guy <laughs> literally beheads a woman in my apartment and leaves it in my fish tank. But no, no, I'll take no. care of it. <laughs> like, I'll. I'll, I'll see to one myself. Uh, you get the police involved, it becomes a whole thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It adds another layer of complication. Yeah, but when people so are dying, it could be like a, woods, a like a beat yeah. cop, like an old like a, a Bobby who's coming past here swinging his truncheon. It's like you guys having any trouble? Rashido and Mark putting the swords behind them. Like no, 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 no. <laughs> we're perfectly fine, officer. Please go <laughs> about your business. We're uh, rehearsing for a play. <laughs> 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 He's Macbeth, and I'm um, the other one. You know, <laughs> <laughs> the Japanese one. <laughs> It's like, oh, Throne of Blood? You're doing Throne of Blood? The Kurosawa? Yeah, yeah, Throne that's of Blood. That's it, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, so no, I, 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 I've got a weird respect for people who are just like, even though, in theory, the whole thing is like, you know, to protect and serve, but people are like, oh, no, I'm not getting those guys involved. I agree to a point. If murder is involved, maybe then call the police. <laughs> That's that's a line I think that's yeah. been crossed there. When they're people not going to send a Dale Cooper, John. They're not going to get send a cool cop to deal with it. <laughs> yeah, uh, hmm. unfortunately, that's... most of them aren't as cool as Dale Cooper, are they? Yeah, I think he always got away too because he's because he's FBI. He, I think he uh, evaded a cab because <laughs> like, well, he's a Fed, he's not a cop, you know. <laughs> well, I was talking um, to my friend about this. We were watching X Files yesterday, and we're we're both a bit like that, and. Um, I did bring up, though, that, like, okay, as much as we love Mulder, he's presumably had to... He's had to have been, like, a good cop or yeah. something to get where he is. So he's, he must a... have done some bad shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I guess that's the thing. So I think that the... I don't know if you have to go through the police force to get there. But, no, because I think, like, in Science of Lambs, it's just like, yeah, Clarice Starling's just, like, fresh out of, like, the the tr like the, the academy, straight into yeah, the FBI yeah. or whatever. But like, the, that, the whole point that... of that plot, though, is that she's new. Yeah. She's untested, untrained. Mulder, everyone knows him. He's been yes, around. He's spooky yeah. Mulder, yeah. <laughs> it's so weird, too, because uh, the company's so kind of schlubby. Like, he's obviously, he's not, like, you know, a, a, you know out of shape or anything. Mm. But he doesn't, like, again, seeing, you know, Dale Cooper looks like a guy who's, like, taking care of himself. And he's, like, yeah. a highly efficient kind of guy. It's clearly starring you see her, like, the opening scenes are literally, like, running that track and showing you, like, oh, yeah, you have to be, like, really together and very physically fit to be in the FBI and stuff. 
And then Mulder doesn't see... I don't think he's run a track in his life. No, he's, too, he's too busy with the aliens now, anyway. Even if he did in the past. He's like, ah, nah, I'm not, I'm not doing that. But that's also it makes, it makes Scully even more impressive, though. It's like she's also a fully qualified doctor. Yeah. And an FBI. Is she, is she a full-blown agent or is she just a consultant? Like... I think no, she's, she's a full, a full agent. agent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A full agent. And I, I always forget, too, like, Gillian Anderson's, like, what, 23 in it or something. It's ridiculous, like, how she's young she is. She's quite young, yeah. Because I was like, you know, when you were a kid, you're like, oh, yeah, she's, like, 40. Because, like, <laughs> she's, she's an old, older person. Although, I think even now, and a weird thing looking at her, and even in season one, I'll be like, oh, she must be, like, mid-30s. Because she just has the air of someone who's, you know, very grown up. She's got a mature kind of presence. Yeah. Yeah. And plus two, you're like, she's a doctor and an FBI agent. <laughs> I think to even get the qualifications, you'd have to be at least over 30, you know? Probably. But, I would think so, yeah. Yeah, but that's, uh, yeah. But anyway, that's, uh, I guess, I guess X-Files do fall under. But no, they're, they're feds, so I guess they're kind of. They're, well, they're, they're kind of cops, though. They're I guess, yeah. the same kind of work. Trying to arrest aliens, you know? Mm-hmm. That's, uh, you see, like Mulder is like those goddamn aliens coming in, here, coming down <laughs> here, trying to take our job, Scully. The one I watched yesterday, he was so close to seeing an alien for the first time, but even Deep Throat wouldn't let him. <laughs> <laughs> That's, I love that. But it was such the tantalizing thing of X Files in the early years mm. was like, oh, you almost saw something. You yeah, almost the saw an alien, <laughs> and then later on, they're just throwing the aliens at you left, right, and center. You're like, oh. You've ruined it now. You've ruined it. It's like, no, the whole point is that you're only supposed to kind of maybe see the alien at some point eventually. You know? Same same with the Mulder and Scully sort of will they, won't they romance thing. Towards the end, they're like, oh, yeah, they're a couple. It's like, oh, no, come on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like all the, all the tension's gone. It's like, no, no, you have to be like the hint of it. Those things that were running around Scully in that one episode. Were yeah. they aliens or were they children with leprosy or whatever? That Could have been saying. lots of things. Ooh, yeah. who knows? But like no, no. <laughs> they're just. Although I remember thinking that, been like the whole thing with the early days X Files, and then watching like the first two episodes or something a couple of years ago. And I think at literally the end of the first episode, Mulder flat out sees a, a UFO. A UFO, <laughs> but if I remember, I think it might get contextualized as like, well, it could be an experimental aircraft. Mm. Like later you know, on, it's an alien. Like... <laughs> <laughs> but um. But yeah, it's like, by all means, show the guy who can, like, stretch himself and go through the the real-life stretch of Armstrong. But don't show the aliens. Come on. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I'm with you. Uh, but anyway, the fact that we're, we're going in this deep <laughs> on uh, X-Files now is kind of an indication that the, the we might have been noted out for the minute. It's our X-Files podcast. But yes, we will break the connection once again. Um... If you would like to speak to us, you can come to Facebook at the Miami Minutes Taekwondo Orphanage. Provide memes. I, I've, I don't make enough memes myself. I'm more of a meme sharer than a creator. Mm. So if you, if you, you have your own um, all-female reboot cast, uh, post it in, post it in the, the listeners page there. Let's see, we'll good some, idea. Good. Very good idea. People, get, get coming up with it. In fact, Sean German, I know you're listening. Mm. So... <laughs> Make your own. I want to know what you think. And other people do the same. You can send us them on uh, Twitter as well. At ba- at, I almost said that minute. At Miami Minutes on Instagram. At Miami Minutes. And why don't you check out our network, Sleepy Charlie Media, on Patreon for bonus content or T Public for merchandise. Buy a t shirt, buy a mug, buy whatever the hell you want, baby. And join us again in one week for minute 80. Holy shit. Of Miami Minutes. <laughs> Listen to me. <laughs> <laughs>